Welcome back to the Comstock Clan. We are going to take you on a tour of our house plants. Because she's got a thing for plants. And so do I. For the longest time, I thought that when you had lots of kids and you homeschool and you have lots going on that you can't have plants. That's not true. And I realize that that is not true. So, Check out all these plants. We're going to start in our kitchen where we have a handful of African violets and my variegated goldfish plant. Which is on its last. Which bloom. had a whole bunch of blooms on it, but as you can see, there's just one left. Oh, there's no one on that too. That's fun. That's the second time that he's bloomed. This one actually is from, like, I've had him for a really long time. Um, and he was about dead. And he was like about, look, he was about this big. This is about what was left. And he's been brought back to life. I am so thankful. Nice. Um, you can see here, this is covered in cat hair. The cats like to, I don't know, rub up against. I don't like doing this because I usually end up pulling off like that. Like. Oops. <laughs> I usually, I don't know, sometimes I do it and sometimes I don't. Yep, African Violet, these guys up here. I love having them on this little turn table thing because you have to rotate African Violets and this allows us to do it easily, so. Awesome. I wonder if he's at the door. You're slow. Yeah. Moving on. I mean, I'm From African Valet to the den. This is our golden pothos. We love him because he started out as like this cute little plant and in the last year and a half has done this and he's had a few haircuts. Um, I have another plant that I will get to in a little bit that is it's offspring. It's baby. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the easiest plants to grow and doesn't need a lot of light, doesn't need a lot of care. So highly recommended if you're a beginner plant grower. So next to him is the ZZ plant. I love this guy. I think like these, all these are new shoots uh -huh. since we got him. You'll notice a trend here that all of our plants need to be tested. But this was my birthday present. Um, this is a Dracaena, I believe. Dracaena. Dracaena. I think it's a Dracaena. He is tall and he has a pop a bubble or a catch a bubble on him. Oh my goodness, still? That probably has been there. A really long days. time. That's oh, funny. okay. Two days isn't too bad. The Dracaenas, I've got another Dracaena in my office that's pretty big. And I think that they're fun because, again, they don't need a lot of light. And he can kind of be over here where he doesn't get a lot of light. And it's just a fun way to have another plant in this room. Nice. <laughs> so then we have Kevin's plant over here. So one, two, three, four. Five. Leaf number five. When we got it, it had three. I love this guy. So cool. And one of them died when the window was open. Been too long, yeah. So, and I mean, I try to do a quick I little. I wiped deal. him down a few times. Um, I love this pot that he's in. But this is a regal shield. An alocasia. Yes. It's the only plant so. name in the house that I know. So over here we have Zazu's plant. <laughs> this is the chirp you hear in all of our videos. So this is a Brazil philodendron. And this guy, oh my goodness, he like he explodes. Here, like I mean, Zazu, stop eating my plant, please. Okay, so one of the things that you'll notice in with some of these plants, or you might not notice, but is that they're actually still in the grower pot. And that's something that I was not aware of as a practice? best practice when I first started doing plants. And so I transplanted all of like our first plants. It's so much easier to take care of when you keep them in the grow pot. Stuff them in a pot, plus then you can change their pot. What is this guy? This is a philodendron Birkin. So this is a philodendron and the one by Zazu is a philodendron. Yes. But they don't look anything alike. No, they don't. There's a lot of philodendrons. That's crazy. And so I th I love this guy. There's just something about him that I think is so cool. His leaves are really like thick and hearty. Mm -hmm. Next to him is a peperomia. I've got 
four different pepperomias. You mean Desteromia. And they are all incredibly different. Like, it's amazing to me how different they are. These guys like a bit of sun and they are pretty hardy. They're like, you want to water them like a cacti or a cactus. Cacti would be plural. So they, they like to dry out completely. This is my Tinky rubber plant. I think he got a little dry in here and that's why his leaf is doing this. He was doing really good and I think I, I you know I think they normally do that. They like to dry out between waterings and I the last time that I was gonna water him I didn't and I probably should have because I oh yep see there goes a leaf. <laughs> Um, that's a pretty crispy looking And here's leaf. another one. Yeah, there's like, there's a few that are just that guy too. So I had inconclusive, what's the word that I'm going for? Like I put the water moisture meter in and I put it in a couple different places and there was one that was wet and there was one that was dry. And so I just, I don't know. So we also have a fiddle leaf fig back here. This guy needs to be transplanted or I need to like just take him out of the pot and re-put him in the pot because his roots are kind of resurfacing. These guys eat the soil so you need to feed them soil basically. This is a ficus. This is a ficus elastica and this is a ficus. Ficus. The fiddle leaf fig is a ficus. Oh, something. I don't know. I don't know. I cool. Don't Moving know. on down the line, we have we passed this guy. Oh, I did pass pass this guy. Lorada. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. So this is a Christmas cactus. And this guy actually we got thinking like we had one Christmas cactus that had beautiful blooms on it, and we got this one thinking that it was gonna bloom like later. Yeah. And his blooms, I think, were stunted and they died. That was the other one. But cool. That's okay. Moving to the mantle, we have Plastica decoratia. <laughs> Doesn't need a whole lot of care or sustenance. In fact, it comes equipped with a tag. What? Really Blue, a uh, Merle, hold on. Merle Haggard? Stop. Yeah. Merle Haggard. So, it's a fishbone. It's called, like, the, its common name is a fishbone prayer plant. I never... <laughs> Alright, stop. Okay. <clears throat> so, this is a Tenanthi... Outside, now please. So this is a Tenanthi Rural Marks or something like that. Tenanthi actually starts with a C, so it's kind of a strange name. The common name for this plant is a fishbone prayer plant. One of the things with the Tenanthi and the Stromanthia and the Calathea and the, the other one that starts with an M. Maranta. Maranta. Is that they all kind of, like they move their leaves. And so what this guy will do at night is his leaves will go up and then like in the morning they come down based off of the light in the room. Um, he started in our bathroom in a pot about half this size and he got huge and didn't fit on the bathroom counter anymore. So we had to move him out here. Um, I think he misses the humidity plus one of the cats. Let's Myrta specifically went through a phase where she attacked him quite a bit. Yeah. So, but I think like for a plant like that that likes humidity, I think he does pretty good out here mm -hmm. being in the main part of the house. That's dry. In Colorado where we have zero humidity. So, zero. One thing I wanted to point out that I did not mention earlier is that you will notice that I think all of our pots in a certain room have follow some sort of a theme. So in this room, they are all like cream or white, except for that guy that back there that's still in the grower pot. In that room over there, they were all like darker. Black, dark colors. Green. Yeah. 
Um, and then we'll we'll see more. But all of these guys are cream and white. <laughs> Again, we'll see more. We'll see more. <laughs> <laughs> Another plant joke. <laughs> so next we have this is another fiddle leaf fig, and I love this one. I really like that one is just a single stem, and we got him when he was kind of bigger. We got this one when it was probably I don't know about like this about tall. two feet shorter. Yeah. I mean, oh, I this guy has done just amazing. So I'm I'm really happy with him. Next to him is our peace lily. This is a domino peace lily that is currently blooming. And you'll see that it has this, the white yeah. variegation. Um, and it kind of looks like a, a, a yes, it is a flower. flower. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, it kind of, well, no, I'm talking about looks the texture. It wrinkly and dry, but it's so not like that's the really domino. But he does take a lot of water. Yes. Now, peace lilies in general do not let, need a lot of sunlight, but with him being the variegated type, I'm hoping that maybe this summer he gets some more white on him because when you've got a variegated plant, for them to actually show that variegation, they need enough light to do so. You'll notice she's only calling her plants him. Yeah, all my plants are boys. <laughs> this is a, another one of the Peperomia plants. He's got a whole bunch of little shoots that are coming out here that eventually we'll be able to pull off and make into new plants. But one thing about them is that they, they're, they shoot up and they have leaves that come out and then as their leaves make their way all the way down to the bottom, they do die off and it's just totally so normal and it's just part of the way that it works. This is a pothos. This is the same type of plant as the golden pothos that we just talked about, the really long one. Mm -hmm. And it's very different, like its leaves are a lot smaller. So this is a pothos N joy, is what it's called, like the letter N, J-O-Y. I think he's beautiful. This is a corn plant. It's another Dracaena. This is the one that's the same as the tall guy that's kind of twisted. Again, we got him and he was probably about this tall, mm -hmm. like a year and a half ago. I was looking for a plant to, so that you wouldn't see my desk and like all of the lights and monitors and such when you came like past the door when this was open, obviously. And I think he does an it's amazing perfect. job of yes. exactly that. This is the propagated golden pathos that I mentioned. And I mean, Hardy. he's already <laughs> like taking off. I might cut him, like, I might cut him a few times and stick him in here and make him a little bit more full. And then this is a snake plant. These guys um, can, like, you can't kill them pretty much. Hmm. They're pretty, they're pretty easy to take care of. They don't need a lot of water and they don't need a lot of sunlight. And then this is one of my favorites. I know that I shouldn't have favorites, but yeah. I do. I have favorites. Hi, Breslin. This is a spider plant. It is a bonny spider plant, which is where you get the curly Q look to it. Mostly spider plants just kind of are like straight leaves. And this guy kind of has a like bouncy curly Q to him. Let's move on to the basement. So you'll find behind me, or next to me, this is a noble something. It's green and pokey. We accidentally bought it at Home Depot at Christmas, thinking we were buying a Christmas plant. Next to the uh, door is its brother or sister. I guess it's a brother, isn't it? And I can't remember. They're from Hawaii. Hey, stop it. Jill. Here, go outside with the boys. Okay. Cause I'm playing, playing with the boys. Oh, wait. Oh, there it is. Norfolk. Yeah. Ar Araucaria Norfolk Island. It's a Norfolk pine. Norfolk, Norfolk pine. Yes. Tadar. See you, boy! 
Exactly! This is a Seymour plant. We saved Seymour from the pit of despair. We were out doing the ornament Christmas shopping and went to our chiropractor's office, which was in a current state of remodel, and someone threw him and his twin by the dumpster. And I think we rescued him. I don't know. I think he's gonna die. Yeah. Like, I just... This yeah. curling's new. This is a green, tropical type plant. I think it's an umbrella tree? It's a type of an umbrella plant, yeah. Umbrella plant? Um, I think we got this at Home Depot? Yeah. Home Depot has a decent selection of plants. It is a gold capella <coughs> scoo. Yeah. Also known as a variegated, and it's the little one. There's a big umbrella plant, and there's a little one. And he just looks awful. He needs some water. Scoo. Breslin's gonna bring down the watering can so he can get some water. Number sign. I bet you that stands for skew, <laughs> not scoo. <laughs> I really like this guy. It's so cool. He he's gonna go very well with the beach themed basement this summer. <laughs> um, I think we need to get another couple. Next, we have another snake plant, and yes, I might scour through our house looking for <laughs> every nook and cranny that I can put a plant in. This is another one of my favorites. This guy's cool. That I love. This is a satin pathos, and it just... I don't know. It has these like shiny silvery or silver they're, pathos. They're, they're I think it's a it's silver. Vel velvety. This is velvety. But so but he had sunny. no he had no trails, like tendrils, whatever they are, when we got him. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna propagate him because yeah. he's another one that I could have like a few. One in every room. <laughs> Over here, we have an Aglonema cori. This is also known as, the Aglonema is a called, also called a Chinese evergreen. They do not require a lot of light. Um, this guy is really sensitive when it comes to temperatures. So we will open up the door, and like if you can see right now, these are all just kind of starting to droop. They're normally a little bit more uh, perky. Perky. Did you perky. Like and he's here? leaking. They leak when they're stressed. Did you get this right here? So he needs to not be next to the door. This is another one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, another philodendron. And this is a regal shield. And it's just, you know, when you have. No, mine's called a regal shield. I'm sorry, <coughs> Imperial Red. Yes, go. Imperial Red. Um, the, I think that the plants that just have a couple leaves are really fun to watch grow because, like, when that guy <laughs> gains a leaf, you don't really you notice. You can't tell. You just wake up one day and go, holy guacamole. But, like, so he this, this also. This just opened up this guy right this here. This one did. Yeah. And then, and it was mm, this one. That one. This was the one before. Present. Go ask Carver, tell her I said you can have a cookie. Okay, so as I mentioned, that guy over there was the Aglonema Cori, where this is the Aglonema Maria. And again, um, can handle really low light levels. Um, he was in my office for a little while, and it was doing fine with just a north facing window until like fall winter time frame mm -hmm. hit at which point it just it wasn't looking as good so we moved him in here and he ended up staying, staying forever same with this rubber ficus tree? elastica burgundy rubber tree over here it's he, got a child he started <laughs> he started losing leaves like crazy and so we brought him in here and he did amazing and he got huge. So we gave him a haircut and huge, like he would be up above. He probably would be hitting the ceiling right now. No. If, yeah. 
It was a lot. Well, I guess maybe, because he would have that height plus this height plus... Gross. The, not the slowdown, because when you, when you Gym cut room. them, they slow down and they like take some time to recover. Ah. So you can see that this right here and up here is what happens. This is where we cut him and then they grow out and continue to grow up. They grow out from of a new a armpit. Yeah. And so the, um, he got cut, he got cut, and then this one back here. And I left two of them. And it's been just really neat to watch him recover. But he's also filled back out. I was worried when he was losing a bunch of leaves. I thought he was going to turn into, like, a Stick. tree. <laughs> like, nothing, like, not shrub-like. And, I mean, he's really filled out since we cut him. Cut him. So. Awesome. So, this guy up here is a fern, or a bird's nest fern. So, he is my first fern, and they don't require a lot of light, so I'm able to put him up here. I do need to put some rocks. If you get a plant and the pot is too deep, you can put some rocks in so they sit like little pebbles in the store. So right now he sits a little too low. Awesome. But I love him. Over here we have propagated, this is the Brazil philodendron from Zazu's plant. <laughs> He's been propagating for a while. I started these three a while ago and then I did these and they obviously are long enough so I need to get him in a pot of his own. And then this is the Pathos Enjoy propagation that I need to also put into a pot. And over here we have a Calathea White Fusion. So this is one of my favorite plants but it's one of the most it's a tricky one. finicky plants. And he was looking really good when we had a humidifier running in here 24 seven. And we kept the humidity at like 70 degree or 70%. So not good for our clothes in the closet and all of that. Yeah, yeah. But he was happy. Totally worth it. Um, over here we have, this plant came as a free gift with another plant that I ordered. And he was like two leaves and I put him in this little pot and he sat out in the den and I killed him almost like five times. And then I finally brought him into the bathroom and so that I could water him more often. Cause when you have a plant in a little pot, you have to water it often, which I've learned I'm never buying the African violets in the little pots because I killed them. So this guy was a couple leaves like probably these two leaves or something. And he has grown to this and Kevin has declared him as his plant because it is on his side of the sink. And he has named him Felipe. Felipe. So he has 19 leaves. <laughs> Kevin counts his leaves. So over here I have my um, I'm totally, I got it. It's a Hoya Crimson Queen. And man, oh man, I love this plant. Like if I have a favorite of my favorites, this is probably it. I was kind of afraid of it for a while. Um, you told me not even to look at it. Like I was just so nervous about it because it's so cool, but I didn't know exactly how to take care of it. And it's fairly easy to take care of. It needs some decent light and I water it like once every 10 days and just soak it, let it get dry and then water it again. And then here we have my Ficus Elastica Burgundy Rubber Tree Baby. <laughs> and you'll see when they grow new leaves, they leave these. Here, that finally Skins. came off. Yeah. It's like the casing that the leaf grows in. But I mean, this guy is. He's shooting. He, like, he didn't do anything for. A couple months. A while after we cut him and grew him because they put forth the energy to growing roots. And then it was like 
he just decided, all right, now it's time. And I mean, since we transplanted him, he grew this, this, and that. And so he is doing awesome. Okay, so up here, this is a Calathea rosy. Um, he used to have a lot of rose coloring like that on his leaves, and I think he needs a little bit more light. He's up pretty high, so he doesn't get a lot of light, which I think is okay. So, And as you can see, these are the ones, again, that they'll go straight up and they'll go down like this. So like tonight, this leaf will be like that. It's kind of crazy. Next to him is a rattlesnake plant. It is another Calathea, which technically I don't think it's a rattlesnake plant. I think I remember watching or reading something that this is actually something else. I can't, I don't know what the actual name is of it though. I think he's really cool. Some of them are more obnoxious than others, but I mean, he gets really upright and tight at night, which is kind of neat. I remember when I first got that um, Tanianthi, when I came <laughs> into the bathroom and I was like, hey, come look at my plant. <laughs> what on earth is this? Like, well, hello, it's called a prayer plant. So this is a pinstripe Calathea. It looks like one of the easier Calatheas to... It is. It is one of the easier. But even him, look, since we stopped doing the humidifier... It's curled up. I think that he got, like, I think that they all kind of got comfortable with the humidifier, and now they're like, um, excuse you. Where is my humidity? This is another one of the Bonnie spider plants, which I think I'm gonna take out of the terracotta pots because they have to get watered too often. And I don't like, I don't know, I don't like watering more than once a week. That doesn't mean that I don't water plants more than once a week. I don't like watering a specific plant more than once a week. I water on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Whatever needs to get watered because some of them aren't on seven day schedules. He actually came, this and this were one plant, and there were probably like three times um, this of these like sh bunches of plants. And I got it shipped to me, and I think that it was oversaturated in water and it, it about died. It took weeks for I mean, to dry the thing out. Oh my goodness. I should have just I should have just taken it out, taken off all the soil, and replanted it and it probably would have been fine, but I was afraid to do it. I just I didn't want to. So I finally took these guys out and then I soaked up like I just put them in water and let them grow in water and then transplant them in here. And they're I mean I need to transplant them again. So this is another Peperomia. These guys, I don't love. <laughs> like, I love them, and I love this guy. Like, this is the burgundy Peperomia, and I love the plant, but I feel like they're tricky for me because they're like, I don't know, they like water, but they like to dry out, and I just have a really hard time with them for some reason. This is a Dracaena, um, it's twisted, again, when I got him, I put him, or he, was in, he was in the sun, and he got too much sun, and so you'll see, he had a lot of leaves that were like crispy, so I cut them, and it looks like, like he's starting to look better. This is another Aglonema Red Valentine. Aglonema. And this one, I think it's so cool, but I am having a really hard time with it. And I'm 99% sure that it needs more sunlight because it is this pink variegation, and I think it just needs more light. I don't think it's a water thing that its leaves are getting yellow. I think that it's totally a light thing. Over here we have an Easter cactus. In the Christmas pot in the Christmas pot. I don't know if I'm gonna work on getting him to bloom or not. It seems really complicated. You have to basically do what the Indians did and get naked and poop and holler underneath the moonlight and put the <laughs> plant in the dark and bring it out just before dusk and uh -huh. let the bees touch Pretty it. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. So it involves 
certain lighting, certain strict darkness, certain coldness. Temperatures. Oh, yeah, and I'm good. just like, I think I'll probably just buy another one. <laughs> this is a Calathea. I believe it's just a, yeah, medallion Calathea. And I probably need to just cut these leaves off there. He didn't get watered one time and it will, it will not do good things for them. But obviously the rest of them is doing fine. So once I trim these off, he'll look better again. And I think he's pretty. This is an empty pot. <laughs> what I have found is that I have a really hard time finding pots that I love. And so, especially like as we talked about, the theme in here is kind of like this maroon and teal and like darker, like Taupe. peachy maroon. We do have some cream, like it's kind of more a, a eclectic. So whenever we find something that we like, make sure to get it because I will have pots or I will have plants sitting without pots if I don't have them on hand. So as you'll see, like this doesn't have a pot and this doesn't have a pot. So this is another Calathea. And as you can see, I like there was, there was like a period of time where I obviously missed watering them and we had some leaf kill. So this is a Calathea Red Mojo and He's pretty easy. He like he reminds me of the medallion, whereas the rosy is much more finicky. This is a Hindu rope, which is another type of Hoya, which is the same as that guy over there. And he came to me in trouble. I got him from Home Depot and he was beautiful. But Home Depot has a tendency to like totally oversaturate their plants in water. And Again, like usually if we get a plant from Home Depot, I won't water it for two, two three, to four, four weeks, weeks yeah. because they're so oversaturated in water. And so again, I've learned my lesson, I think, that I just need to take them out. Repot them. And repot them in new soil that's not a pot. So this guy has some really tiny things growing in here that look like sprouts of some sort, which is kind of strange. Um, I think he's gonna live. Like I think, I think we got a good thing going. He's, it's just gonna be a really long comeback. He's got another thing so, going. But this is another Calathea pinstripe. Calathea he does. Crunch. He does need to get watered today. I didn't water him last night because he's a little bit trickier to get to. Um, again, got used to that humidity. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm noticing a theme here. <laughs> a, we need more plants. And B. We need, need a humidifier. So it sounds yeah. like a fun date. Um, so this is the same as this one. And I had this one first. And we went to Home Depot and I saw this guy. And I, I said to Kevin, I go, it'd be bad if I got another one of these. Do you think that like this guy's going to be jealous? Because this guy's got these really tall, huge leaves. <laughs> and I'd never seen one like that. And I was just like, I need him. And so I got him, and this guy could actually probably go here. Yeah. I moved the satin pathos. I know this is too big for you, but it'll fit for now. <clears throat> yeah, and then lastly, this is the dying Christmas cactus that needs to go out. I need these two, oh, I need at least this. And this is another one that I, this reminds me of the Peperomia, where like these guys, because I just I had a hard time with it. So you have a watering schedule that you keep track of all the plants in their watering schedule inside of a task keeper mm -hmm. called Asana. Mm -hmm. And a little bit. It's not like you started out with all of these plants. It started with one. Actually, I think we started, started with two. two. And then over the last year, we've become good and friends. A half. We've become good Almost friends. Two. Almost two. Almost two years. We become good friends with the people at the nursery that we love. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us on the plant tour. We will be back.